I love she's getting prepared. Um, today is July 8, uh, 2002, and this is our video diary. Uh, we are um, under the house floors, and we are now uh, excavating the walls. We are removing the wall plasters and trying to follow the walls, and we are in for another surprise in this house, which is that uh, some of the walls, at least some that we can uh, see because they, their uh, plaster face has been removed, are continuing deeper down. The west wall still has plasters going down below this midden, what we think is a midden, but it could be a fill inside the house. And um, not just that, but we can also see that this wall consists of two different types of bricks and mortars. And one a set of bricks and mortars go up to this, from the bottom up to here, and another one from here up, which means that most likely this lower portion is part of an earlier house. So um, then there is a possibility that this so-called midden is actually a fill that was put in an earlier house on top of which was put a floor of the building three. But for us to um, um, see whether that was the case, we need to start digging now this midden or midden fill uh, along the walls and see what uh, is really happening. We can, in this portion, we can see that the floor is going down, mm -hmm. deeper down below the level of the uh, the floor, first floors in the building. And then on this end, on the south wall, it seems that the wall plaster ends here, but it seems that the wall breaks continue again down, further down. Um, on this end, there's a similar situation, and then we'll see what's happening with the north wall. In any case, even on the north wall, uh, in the co northwest corner, where there has been a little bit of, a little bit of cleaning of the wall plaster, we can see for sure that there are two types of bricks, and that there is again somewhere here at about the same level. There is a, a from here down there are uh, different bricks and mortars, and from then from here up. So it, it would be that at this, roughly the same level, the old building was truncated and uh, new walls were put on top of it. But we can see that in this area there is interlocking of the bricks between the two walls in this upper area, which would be all right. And then, um, uh, in terms of the plasters, we haven't, on the west wall where we removed the plaster yesterday, we didn't see anything especially interesting. It was all uniform thin layer of plaster that was uh, just one phase pl plaster. On the south wall, we, are, um, we have the plasters that we know from before, where there is a lot of uh, soot in this area, uh, which is uh, all right because we had oven through most of the building history in this part of the house. And then we have our coast hole and we have uh, we can see that here the post was actually put uh, away from the wall in the sense that there is a plaster behind the post or between the post and the wall itself so the post did not go directly on the bricks and um, the plasters here are just uh, there is nothing special about them that we can say we have had in this part we have had a lot of uh, these holes, these are places where we had inside the plaster a very uh, hard clay uh, sort of balls or, or, or something stuck into there, which we think were the places where the, on which the things were mounted. It, we, it would be like little pegs that we would have in the walls today, or hooks on which we can hang things or attach thing and so, things and so forth. So that, that we had those along this wall before. And then what we can see in this plaster is that the, the wall was cut 
before an oven, so this is a cut and that was plastered. And there is also, not a lot, there is quite a lot of soot in some layers behind this layer in this area, which would make sense because this is a kitchen area. And then this plaster shows that we have a little curve here, which is part of our ladder, entrance ladder setup. And then the soot on the plasters continues up to here. After that, we don't see much of it. And um, on this wall, and then we have a niche that was plastered. On this east wall, we had plasters that are fairly damaged. And then we have our post here, and we had a plaster behind the post. So again, the post was not uh, abutting the bricks itself, but there was a plaster uh, behind it. And then we have our so-called relief, plaster relief and painting here uh, behind 170, which we have talked about yesterday. And then the next uh, post, which again has a, an interesting situation where uh, there is partially only a plaster behind, uh, I mean, in between the wall and the post, but partially uh, it doesn't exist. So we don't know whether this plaster here was removed during the uh, digging the, the post out or whether there is other reason for it. But in any case, it is strange to have it. That's so. interesting, actually, when you see, look, look, this thing is like your little, your little stuff over there, maybe. A little ledge, yes. yeah. Might be might have to do with the fact that this was old plaster from an old older wall. You might see. Oh, in the older yeah. building here. Yeah. Mean? Yeah, possible. Except that this was included. This plaster was yeah. totally in included in this whole mm. wall plaster. So it is contemporary with the building three. But even if they had this whole plaster set up from an earlier building, um, you know, it was, why would they not plaster this and then set the post so that they have filled, up, filled in this space between the mm. wall and the post rather than have it right. halfway? So it seems to me that this, he, in here, plaster actually existed, but it was removed as the post retrieval took place. And especially if we, uh, if they had an installation on this post, which uh, we are pretty sure they had, because we had uh, horns in this pit, we found the horns, and so we think there was an installation around uh, the post. So in removing of the whole thing, that's how this was all um, stripped of plaster. And then going further this way, what we have, we have plasters that are not very well preserved and yet another um, hole or cut type of situation where um, I at least think that it is uh, also it was an installation that was taken out and the reason I think that because we have a fairly um, defined uh, with plaster area that goes like that and goes like that and that's exactly where we are missing that it corresponds with this cut What's really interesting here is, which I've been wondering about, I can understand. These are bricks all the way, and the plaster line is actually here, which is much further out than the wall. Right. To, which I've never, I've never understood that. I always thought it was maybe bulging or something. But if if you follow that plaster and you see how there is this ledge, that yes. this bulging out. If this was a similar kind of installation, you would have that plaster out and away from the actual wall plaster. But would you have the bricks sticking out as well? Yes, because we have a case in the northwest part of the building where the bricks were designed, prefabricated, so to speak, to allow for making of this little extension in the wall. So these bricks were wider for this much coming out. These are the same bricks that uh, go here. They were they were not. They didn't have this shape. They had sort of you know, roundish and just gradual um, narrowing of the brick here, but we cut them this way in order to see what's happening. So you would have the wider bricks here that would get into narrow, normal brick. And all that was made in order to allow for this sort of extension or ledge. 
and then we have another one here. So obviously these uh, wall installations or, or, or little shelves or whatever it was were important and they were building them and they were um, making the bricks to allow for them. So then going further, we have a very thick plasters in this corner, very, very thick. This is probably the thickest plaster, plasters, if I remember well, from the beginning of the excavation. In this corner, we had the thickest plasters in Building 3, well preserved, but now they're quite uh, fragile and falling down. So a lot of plastering in this corner, soot on the walls as well. Now, this is very far away from the oven, and still we have lots of soot on this uh, layer of plaster and inside. Um, let me just finish about these posts and then you can talk about the whole cut business. And then we have another post which is our half trunk, tree trunk post that again hasn't been set right on the uh, wall bricks but on a plaster. And then we have again uh, regular plasters that uh, have evidence of soot, and these are the plasters that also have paint. We have seen earlier a little bit of paint over there. We actually have seen red paint in this area as well on an earlier plasters that are now gone, which are contemporary most likely with this painted wall. And then we have the next post that um, was a, a regular uh, tree trunk post, and here we have plaster between the wall bricks and the post, not in the upper area. We don't know if that is because this eroded, the plaster from here eroded, but certainly in the lower area, it's a very thick layer of plaster there. And then in this part where the plasters were almost completely stripped, we can see a lot of soot on the plaster and um, somewhat thinner layers of plaster, not so many layers. And um, that's about that. And so now going back to the problem of the plasters, especially here in the central part of the north wall and northeast part, plasters going deeper down. Um, what, what's the deal with that? Oh, yes. Good morning. <laughs> um, what we had here when we were excavating were these huge We've always been having these huge um, masses of plaster floor and um, wall packing, I mean plaster floor and packing, um, and they're very, very thick and densely packed down at the lower you get until you get to these almost like solid brick-like things at the bottom here, which is what we've got along the wall here. And for that, um, at the same time, we thought we'd reached the bottom of the plaster at about here, but in fact, it started to go on down. And you can see here, so what we did was to take away a whole, about uh, 10, 15 centimeters of midden all across this, it, this corner. And what we found was that the plasters do go on quite a way be, um, deeper than the actual, the lowest floor, which would be here. And they, these ones are truncated and keep going on and seem to have ended at about here. So we seem to have them on top of the midden down here. However, they're still going on, the plaster is still going, continuing down behind this mass of brick, bricky sort of stuff um, here. So we're not quite sure what's going on, why that is. Um, at the same time, as we cleaned it, we see the mass of brick along here and here you can see it again. This is not just a thin um, packing layer. It's, a, it's sort of several, I mean, 20, 30, and it's still going down. 20, 30 centimeters. Over here, um, something I wanted to point out, which is that here you have something that looks like brick and then mortar and then, um, and then brick, but we're not sure about that, whether it's a whether in fact what we're dealing with here is one section of wall that's in place or moved out of place, but at least wall from the earlier house along 
along our northern wall here and possibly another section going in the north-south direction there. So these are all possibilities. So some suggestions were floating around here yesterday in the discussion. Uh -huh. right. What are the... Um, <coughs> they were various. One was that this... Uh, this, that this wall is actually built incorporating an earlier wall into its structure. Which we do see in case of the west wall. Right. And northeast, northwest corner of this same wall. So it's a, a fairly a feasible possibility. Another is that these are in fact, um, as they pulled down, that this, that this is all, all our building three um, plaster and wall and that what we're seeing here are chunks of the um, original, the early higher, the earlier building when it was higher that were pushed in and helped to fill in the space in the middle of the old building to act as foundations. So it, they look to me as though they're more kind of vertically sitting rather than horizontally fallen down, but. That's, mm. that we would have to really excavate this ribbon to be able to sh see that. Yeah. Another idea was that, for instance, over here, that, they, that this is, in fact, the original early wall of the, the um, previous building, that our west wall is the early previous building that they just incorporated without pulling it down. That was another idea. Um, what other ones were there? Well, the idea, one of them was sitting on the midden that it was new, a new wall sitting on the midden there was something over about there, maybe. I yeah. didn't hear that in the beginning. There was a discussion about this possibly being a foundation trench here, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Another idea, um, Jason, was that there was, there was actually a foundation trench that was dug, um, where the, which was then where they placed the wall and then stuffed the rest of the trench with building material, bricks and so on, to keep it solid which again apparently they've seen in other other areas in the south, yeah, in the south the right okay well uh, just to add something else is that um, looking at the screen what remains of the screen wall which is this post holes what we can see now they're very nicely cleaned tanya cleaned them carefully yesterday we can see that they they're fairly deep and we'll take today the measurements their measurements we can see that there were at least here in the very wall at least four, maybe five posts, which was not um, clear before. Before we had the big post there, that big post, this one and one and and then this one here, I think. We didn't see very well these ones. Now they are better defined. We can see that they are the posts that were inside were most likely leaning to the east like that, which was the result of the slumping of the whole uh, building floors to the east, and this one as well, would have been something like that, at least at, at the end of its existence. But most of its existence, it was, it was little, um, it was more like that than vertical. And then uh, we can see their bottoms, that they're fairly, their conical shape, made uh, by putting, most likely by putting a post in and then turning around and until it's set deep down and then setting clay around it and packing clay around it to hold it in place. And um, what else? So we'll also look at the depth of the rest of the whole uh, posts, post holes in the building. Take the measurements of that. I think that covers this building. We should really uh, say something about 87, and then uh, that will be it. Let's go 